This video goes over what a probability distribution is. So many probability experiments can have numerical outcomes and the outcomes can be counted or measured. A random variable x has a single value denoted little x for each outcome in an experiment. If you have a bag with eight different, different numbered ping pong balls, then x is the number chosen from the bag, capital X, and lowercase x has a different value for each of the eight possible outcomes. The probability of obtaining each of these outcomes when you combine them all together is called the probability distribution for the experiment. So using counting principles from our previous units, we can create the following probability distribution table for the sum obtained by rolling two six-sided dice. All we're doing is find the probability of each outcome and we're putting them all together in one table. That is all a probability distribution is, listing all of the probabilities for all events in one spot. So once the table has been created, we can create a histogram from that, which shows how each value in the distribution occurs and it gives you where the majority of the results you can expect. The independent variable is always going to be your random variable, while your dependent variable is going to be frequency, or it could be probability. And there's an example shown below here. The frequency histogram and the probability histogram, which are exactly the same, the only difference is that the y-axis um, is a different measure. So let's do an example of a probability distribution type question. And the first one says, using either the table or the graphs, state the probability of rolling a sum of nine using two dice. So what is the probability that my random variable is going to be equal to nine? Well, if I scroll up, the bar that I'm looking at is nine. And I see that my probability is kind of hard to read. I think it's about 0 0.11, but I'm gonna go up a little bit higher here to my frequency table. I see that it is four out of a possible 36 outcomes. So four out of 36 or one out of nine is my probability. You can also calculate uh, the expected value of a probability distribution and in order to find the expected value, you're going to find the sum of all values, multiply the probability of each value occurring. This is similar to calculating uh, the weighted mean. The next example that we're gonna do is about a miniature golf course, renting out putters of different lengths for golfers to use. The course has five 24 inch putters six 28 inch putters, seven 32 inch putters, and seven 36 putters. Uh, they're assigned randomly to golfers who wish to play a uh, round. So the first thing that we're gonna do is create a probability histogram. And you should use a ruler. If you have graph paper, that's even better. I don't, there we go. So my probability histogram is Let's see, I will put my labels on here. So my first bar is gonna be my 24 inch putters. My second bar is gonna be my 28 inch putters. Then my 32 inch putters. And then my 36. So I've got 28. Oops, 24 is my first one. 24, 28. 32, and 36. So now what I need to know is find the probability of each of those bars in order to fill in my y-axis uh, and determine the height of each of my bars. So my total number of putters is five plus six plus seven plus seven. So 14, 20, so I've got 25 total putters. So that means the probability of getting a 24 inch putter is five out of 25 or one fifth. 
or 0 0.2. My probability of getting a 28 inch putter is going to be six out of 25. And then my probability of getting a 32 inch putter is going to be seven out of 25 the same as the probability of getting a 36 inch putter is also seven out of 25. So if I change those into decimals, I've got 0 0.28, 0 0.28, and finally 0 0.24. So I'm gonna put uh, some ticks on my scale here. Let's go up this way and I'm going to start with let's say 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 and I know that my 24 inch putter is right here at 0 0.2 so I can fill that one in. My 28 inch putter is at 24, so just under halfway. Filling in my bars here. Uh, my 32 inch putter, so 28, and 32 and 36 are the same. I'm just going to draw that line all the way across. And I am actually, because this data is not continuous, they're discrete, I'm just going to make my bars little bit separate here I've got oh but it is ah, it is continuous well, let's put them all together here so making things too complicated here we go and our last one so we've got a probability histogram and then the last thing that the video is asking us to calculate is the expected length of an assigned putter. And so what we want to do is I'm actually, I'm gonna do B down here. So in order to calculate the expected value, we are gonna take the length of the putter and multiply by the probability of getting that length and we're gonna do the same thing for all of them, sort of like we did when we calculated the weighted mean. So 32 times 0 0.28 plus 36 times 0 0.28. And multiplying all those together, we get an expected value of 30.56, which tells us that the expected Length is 30.56 uh, inches. It's okay that is not, it's not an actually obtainable value. All it says is that probably our putter is gonna be anywhere between 29 and 31, which kind of makes sense in terms of our data. And that, those are some examples of probability distribution questions and what a probability distribution is.